This is a visualization of how foundational mathematics skills and concepts map to the grade levels and when they are taught. So on the left, the vertical axis is our grades, K, one, two, three, all the way up through seventh grade. That's really foundational mathematics is K to seven, you know, K seven slash eight. On the bottom x-axis, we have all the subtests of mathematics, right, of foundational mathematics. So in, in the color area, you see these represents which grade levels have content that is being taught. So numbers, it starts off in kindergarten, it's taught all the way through end of fourth grade. Place value starts off end of first grade, continues to end of fifth grade. Fraction starts being taught at the end of first grade and goes all the way up to the seventh grade, right? So this shows you the visualization of where all the concepts and skills are taught. It's interesting because you'll see, you know, in early grades, you do a lot of foundational numbers and operations, right? It's right over here. And then as you uh, go up in grades, you see the skills you're teaching are like exponents, positive, negative numbers. Those are taught in the later grades, but they're not introduced to later. And then we have our other strands, me measurement, data analysis, geometry, algebraic thinking, right? So it's interesting. Um, but this is the visualization. You could see it's very spread out. There's lots that need to be taught. So this is the first step in understanding why things are so difficult teaching math because it's very broad. Now, here's the next step. When you look at the way we do testing and instruction, let's take a look at a fourth grader. A typical fourth grader, when you do a benchmark test, you're gonna be giving them a lot of items in fourth grade. Most of them will be end of year fourth grade, but some of the stuff will also span third grade. So we're really testing within these areas. That's what all these little red um, cells are. And that's what a benchmark or broad-based measure would do. But here, and, and here's how it would calculate. You base these items, you test it, and then you would come up with a stale, scaled score within each of the strands, 650, 525, 670, 425, 375. And then those scores are rolled up into a total score. So this is how testing is, is happens. Now, the interesting thing about this is we also teach this way. This is part of the problem. When you have fourth graders, we focus our instruction on fourth grade and maybe we go down to third grade, but we really focus on these two bands. We don't go beyond this, but look at the way the content of math is all this colored area, right? It's very broad. So now when we really look at a diagnostic model, how does a diagnostic model work? Well, all this little text here, which you can't see, those are the skills and concepts that are actually taught. So let me zoom in right over here. This is multiplication, division, and fractions. Let me zoom into those three areas. If we zoom in, we now see that um, this is the scope and sequence of teaching math. It's stacked. You need to teach this thing first which is multiplication readiness. Then you teach over here, multiplication facts, zero and one. Then you teach multiplication factors two to 10, powers of 10, right? Let's jump up over here, two digit by one digit. Next, we teach three digit by one digit. Then we teach two digit and three digit by two digit, right? So you teach it in this order. Same thing with fractions. You have all these different things you're teaching, right? So it's interesting. So let me go back out. So in a diagnostic model, this is how it looks, but this is what's necessary to teach mathematics and to really help students who struggle or help students uh, learn faster. This is an assessment, the Adam assessment, actually executed on an individual student. You see the bars, this is their high points, this is where they've achieved. But look at the range of this assessment. The Adam is an adaptive assessment, it's a diagnostic adaptive assessment. It went all the way down to 0.9, so high kindergarten all the way up to 5.2 when it adapted and assessed the students because this student has skills within that range. So this is where they ended up, right? You see the, the darker color bars. So let's go to the next step and look at this. What are the bright green cells? Those are the present levels. So if you're doing intervention or you need to write an IEP, we now know the present levels exactly, the high points for the student across all these different areas. But you can see we really needed to have a very full adaptive assessment that goes up and down. There's no guessing. Like if this student was tested right here in fractions and they failed, it would go down, it would go down, it would go down, it would go down, it'd go down. Mastery, so then it would stop. So we now know where the student's at and what they need to work on next. So a true diagnostic assessment goes up and down within each of these scope and sequences and finds a definitive present level and then the next instructional point, right? So how does this work in terms of scoring, which is really interesting too. If we take this and we go to the next field here, 
we now see that you take these present levels and you calculate a score for numbers in operation, 4.1, and then you take all the strands and you have a total score of 3.71. This is calculated. There's no guessing, right? This is exactly what the student needs. So interestingly enough, when we go to the next step, let's say we work with the student for, you know, um, six to eight weeks because we know we need to target some certain areas. So if I wanted to help the student, I would say, hey, I'm going to focus on numbers and operations because I know that numbers and operations is the foundation of all math, right? Everything else is based on top of it. So I would come over here and say, I would focus on these areas right here, these fraction skills and maybe this multiplication skill right here. And I would work on that for the next you know, six to eight weeks. And if I do that, let's say I get two new high points. So if we zoom in again, let's say I teach this student these 10 skills or whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skills, plus this one skill. So that's nine skills total. Right here, I'm teaching them two digit by one digit multiplication. And over here, we're going fractions, representing fractions all the way up to comparing and ordering. So I teach them all these skills and then I give a quiz. I just quiz them on two digit by one digit and also comparing and ordering. If I quiz them on those two areas and they pass, I get a new numbers and operation scores, and then that also forces a recalculation of the total score, 3.87. So this is called real-time progress monitoring. This is the model under which you want to operate for students because in a model like this, with an assessment like this, you're targeting what students need, you're assessing quizzes and measuring right away, and you have an accurate running total score. So you can tell if it's working, or if the student's having real growth or not. With a benchmark assessment, you'd have to give the whole assessment again. You can't, you can't just um, do two quizzes and have the data overlay on top of it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little complicated and it's a very complicated graph, but this shows the power of diagnostic models of assessment over standard models of assessment. All right, thank you very much.